Let me do it. All right. Uh, welcome back. We're another episode here. Uh, all right. You guys know. I'm Jason. <coughs> I'm Scott. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a controversial topic. All right. Let's let's just get it out there. Let's talk through it and see what we think. All right. Spotters. The spotters, yeah. What about them? Man, spotters. Uh, I think there's times and places for spotters. Right? I think, um, uh, you know, one place that comes to mind is that uh, drop in right before you got to be nuts. Yeah, I think events in general, right? Well, that giant drop where you kind of just slide down. Yeah, on the maze. The, yeah, yeah, on the, the maze, drop. right? Um, you've got to be somewhat lined up on that bad boy, right? We've seen people slide down in different things and hit their side and stuff. Uh, but I think that's a good one to have someone at the bottom to say which way you need to go a little bit. So when you slide, you slide a little bit better. Um Right, but if you've driven that a bunch of times, right, you just you'll know your line. So you don't you don't always need a spotter. You just need a spotter when it's unfamiliar ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess we'll start with. Do Do you feel spotters help? Absolutely. Okay. If they know the line and they. You know, have experience spotting different kinds of rigs. You know, it, it's it's all about experience. I mean, a lot of people, they mean well and they want to be helpful. And they, you know, some people can create really bad situations. Right. right? Um, so a couple things you're looking for when you're spotting, right? Um, I think uh, when you're spotting, right, I, I don't generally spot. Um Right, but I, I think we were talking about, right, you got to be aware of the full vehicle, right? And I think that's where some people have downfalls. They just look at the front tires where they're going. They don't accommodate for the type of vehicle, right? So for for my Jeep, right, um, and it's changed a little bit, but not a lot, but whatever my front tires, my rear tires are going to do, right? There's not a lot of question in that, right? I was... Sh- you know, 100-inch, 99-inch wheelbase, they just followed. It's not that big a deal. Um, It's changed a little bit now. We'll kind of see what that does, but it seems to be tracking pretty good. But when you're at 114, where are you at? Somewhere? Um, 116. 116, right? Soon to be 119. 119, right? Whatever your front tires do is not what your rear tires are going to do at all. Right, like I don't, I don't know if you know that. Or I guess you know yeah. that now, right? Like, you've you've seen that, and I see it now a lot. Right, is that when we get into something, especially a little bit tighter, where there's a turn in it, right? Your front tires, you have to stay longer, straighter, and get up higher, or crazier, off camber, uh, to start making that turn, so your back tires can get up on that rock that you need to be on to make it around. Right, and that comes with experience, but it helps when someone can say, "Hey, keep going a little bit further," especially if it feels bad, right? But if we can see that you're you're stable, it feels bad, but nothing's really lifting or off the ground or anything, right? I think that's been a good thing to spot. But I think the other thing in that is it, I think really it helps the driver if they're paying attention to what they're doing, really learn their vehicle better. And get in that, you know, that situation where you feel really bad off camber, but everybody's looking at you and saying, you're, you're good. Keep going a little bit further, right? And if you're in control in some things and don't skinny pedal it and don't fire up it and lift or something, you know, I think that's a good, a good spot and a good way for you, for a driver, not just you, but anybody to really start learning their vehicle and feeling it out in a pretty good way um you know but i think people really have to be aware of the different types of vehicles that do that and understand what vehicles do um 
you know, so I think, yeah, I think spotting can be really good, um, especially in new places that you just don't know. Yeah, if it's if it's real technical stuff, if it's, you know, gnarly, having somebody that knows, knows the lines, if you've never been there before, look, I don't, I don't feel emasculated, you know, if somebody helps me get through stuff. What was that first one we did in Arizona? That notch? Um, um, highway to Hell. Right, that needed... I mean, for us, on our first time, we had to be spotted, like... Yeah, but, I mean, look at all the stuff we drive through now that, you know, once upon a time, you you needed a spot. Now, okay, right? now. Or, you, or you wanted one. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know... Um, Let's talk about leading trails, events, right? You have to spot people uh, until you figure out if they know what they're doing, right? Or somebody's buddy or significant other wants to spot them. You need to figure out if that person knows what they're doing. You know, if everything's groovy, you know, and you see, okay, these, these guys know what's up. They They can take care of each other. That gives you the freedom to go take care of other people that need help more. Right. Um, but I mean, it can lead to situations if they don't know what they're doing, where everybody has a bad day, a long day, because now we're stuck or flopped or worse. Um, so I think you need them. Where do you, how do you feel? On a new trail with someone new that you don't know spotting you. Just met them, getting out on the trail, something difficult. Well, it's the same thing, right? You kind of feel them out. You get a feel for whether they know what they're doing. Or they might know what they're doing, but they've been with specific people, specific rigs. And, um, you know, you can tell if, if the way they're directing you isn't really in tune with the way you drive or in tune with your rig. And then you just, you know, kind of politely do what you're going to do and <laughs> just drive you know, it your way. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think for me, my comfort comfortability level of it is, you know, when we go to new places, I want to be behind you. One, I know your rig. I see what it does. I know what my rig needs to do behind your rig, right? And two, you know what my rig does. So if I need a spot, you know, it's, you know what to do. You're comfortable with me. I'm comfortable with you. You know what my Jeep can do, what I can do, whatever it may be at that point. Whereas it's someone new and it can, right? It's even harder for me being right-hand drive, right? They don't know, right? And they start saying go passenger mm -hmm. and they mean driver, right? There's a bunch of things with that too that can get lost pretty quickly. Um, even though I do have a speech with everybody I go with that, hey, driver's always driver. That's why I have a sticker on the windshield if you're wondering. It's really for safety. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's a big thing for me. And that's why when we're new, I, I pretty much have to be behind you for my comfort level, especially if it's something crazy that we haven't done. Right. So, um, <clears throat> do you think they can be a crutch? Sure. I mean, it, it could be a crutch if you just never learn to do it on your own and you just rely on, on having a spot all the time. But I think when people say that, I think it's kind of a dick thing to say, you know, um, because there are a lot of benefits. Um, you know, if I'm leading trails, I don't have the luxury of a spotter. I have to go and I have to figure it out. I have to pick good lines because, you know, that person every, behind you is going right. to try to do the same thing. Yeah. So, um, but so I think, you know, if you're, if you're using a spotter on a trail, you've done half a dozen times, 10 times. Yeah, maybe. That hurts. Maybe maybe that's a crutch. But I don't remember that trail I've done 10 times. Um, but look at, you know, the first time we went to San Hollow, I mean, we had 
an expert spotter, luckily. And we drove stuff we never would have driven. Never in, right? Never even would have looked at. I mean, he had us taking, you know, buggy lines and stuff that we wouldn't have done. You know, we would have had a great time. We would have, and we would have thought that we were pushing ourselves. But he pushed us like, in ways I, I would never have imagined. Yeah, that was good. So that's, you know, probably the best possible experience you could have with somebody coaching you and spotting you. And, man, he was so good. I mean, we might as well shout him out, right? Yeah, it's Kevin. Crazy KS, right? Like, man, he, he it didn't matter the vehicle, size, anything. Man, he knew what vehicles would do and knew how to get us through things. It was It was incredible. It made the trip, really. Like, it was really great having him. Yeah, within, you know, the first 30 minutes, you knew, okay, this is, I don't have to worry about this at all. This guy's got me. Right, yeah. Um, speaking of, you know, well, uh, I guess my question is, how much, how much does a harness inhibit you driving? Oof. I don't want to say don't wear your harness because you should, but um, if the shoulder straps are too tight, yeah, it, it inhibits me a lot because I, I I like to be able to move around and look around. I like so, to be out to be able to see so out. A lot of times, I'm just wearing the lap belt. Yeah, I mean, I don't wear my. I mean, we put our shoulder harnesses on if we if it's super think sc- we're gonna roll. Yeah, if it's super sketchy, if it feels like i can flop or roll i'll put the the shoulder straps on yeah um you know how about how about those videos where you see people strapped in and just looking at their spotter the whole drive through the obstacle that's one way to do it you know and i mean i don't know those people i don't know their experience so, you know, I think for somebody who's just getting into it, you know, everything should be fair, you know, no, no shame in any, anything. Yeah, that's, that's you know, fair, right? I mean, you want to, you want everybody to be safe, you know, everybody get back in one piece and try to minimize the drama. <laughs> um... Have you, I don't know, can you think of a story where you spotted someone and you're like, what am I spotting them for? Oh, yeah. (laughs) All the time. Other than me. Right? Like, yeah, somebody that just isn't taking any direction at all. They're just going their own way. And doing the opposite of of what you tell them. Often, there's there's somebody in the passenger seat. When that's happening, I've I've found ah, okay. too. Um, yeah, I mean we've we've you know not that I'm long in the tooth in this is this game at all, but um, you know we we've, we've led trails at you know quite a few events at this point and experienced a lot of different types of drivers, different skill levels, different rigs, um, and. Get you a little bit jaded, at least me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you just have to like really have a talk. Like, yeah. look, you know, this will be so much more enjoyable, so much easier if you just listen. And I mean, I'm thinking of one individual in particular who um, wouldn't take in any instruction and did a lot of damage. To a brand new rig. No, I didn't. Wasn't okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I was thinking. You know, I think I think the problem with that when they don't is like. You know, when people are spotting in most cases, they're really trying to get you through it without breaking, without damage, to keep moving, have a good time, right? And I think that's what we're we see if people don't listen to their spotter. And maybe you know, I think this coincides with it is if you're on a a trail that may be a little too difficult for you 
right? That's where we see a lot of breakage by not listening, um, you know, and getting themselves in bad situations. And well, sometimes it's just ego, right? Um, last year we had a person who had actually experienced several years before and it was the same thing you know and just oh, this yeah. just super ego and oh yeah we've done this we've done that and like yeah you know don't tell us what to do and you know and I think at the when everybody was lining up at the staging area right we're like um this is a it's a really hard trail right this is gonna be a hard trail and um yeah blah, 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 you know insulted that you know we had to you know preface it with anything and then as soon as we got to the first obstacle like it was scared she was panic and um the person who was supposed to drive couldn't drive anymore and they had to switch yeah they switched out to um, get it. so you know i mean there's a lot of scenarios but um you know overall i think um, it's, it's part of the game. It's part of learning. And, you know, even when you're experienced, if you're getting on something sketchy, gnarly for the first time, somebody knows the line, like something that is notorious for flipping people. I'm going to listen to that guy. Yeah. You know, I think a good one, we don't see it too much with, with our type of vehicles, but with, uh, you know, the IFS suspension in the right, the front, just coming down that first part of black bear, right. It, it's not difficult. No, it's, it's not the easiest, most overrated trail ever, <laughs> but, but we've seen vehicles flip the uh, flop. There, yeah. People do. Right. People because of the, too. the uneven drop and that front suspension doesn't work like a solid axle. And, you know, it can be real bad if you don't pay attention and listen to people that are helping you with that, trying to get you through it. Because they know they've seen it or experienced it or whatever it may be. Um, so that's a good one, you know. And I think, you know, asking for a spot's never a bad thing, right? What, what was that one in Moab? Cane Creek, right? Like, we were coming out of the, the, the canyon right after, what was that? Hamburger Hill. Hamburger Hill. Right. And man, I was, we were on a flat area. It was probably, how wide do you think that was next to the cliff before the drop off? A couple feet. Yeah. But how, how wide was the hole? Total, maybe 10 feet. All right. 10 feet. So I had plenty of room. Right. And man, but sitting on the other side, I got my driver tire up on a rock and all I could see was the other side of the cliff. And I freaked out. Like I had to have, I had to stop and have you or someone come back and tell me where I was. And like, I was so panicked. I couldn't even get out of my own Jeep to get out and look. Yeah. I remember I saw in my mirror, I saw you stop. And... Yeah. And there's a couple times like that. And when we were in San Hollow, we came up, uh, I don't even know where it was probably maybe the maze, but we came up something and it was a hard right turn. And then a drop. And we did it with Kevin. We didn't do it this last time. We didn't go that way. Same trail, but we didn't go up that mm -hmm. way he took us. And man, I was scared on that one too. Panicked on that one and had to have a spot. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't think they're a crutch. I think if you don't try to learn from it, it could be a crutch by just having someone tell you every time. Right. But I mean, I think they're spotters are pretty valuable and you know helps your comfort level and make sure you're safe right like i didn't know i could have rolled off that thing i don't know i didn't i didn't want to roll off and that's why i had someone come back and spot me through it because for me it felt terrible i mean you guys were on the other side and could see how far and what was going on over there but yeah i think like we said earlier the only the only drawback is if you never untether from the spotter because if you don't, you're not going to learn to, to pick your own lines. And that's kind of the name of the game is learning how to find your lines. Yeah, to get through and find your line and keep moving. Keep moving along. That's the name of the game with a group. Right? So, um, all right. That's good. What, what else? Anything else to add 
to spotters? Thank you for your service, <laughs> all you spotters out there. Uh, we appreciate it. Make our trips more enjoyable, getting us through things. Um, huh? You know who else was good thinking about it? Was it Rob? From Wheeling Out West? Yeah, Rob Manders. Yeah, yeah. he's a good spotter. Good coach. Yeah. Good, good uh, guy. And, but he knows those trails, right, really yeah. well. What were we on Calamity, I think? We ran Calamity with Rob, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that was good. That was a good spot there, you know. Um, but even, you know, I think just to keep going on that, you know, a couple times I had to get out and, you know, help spot you because I just know what your Jeep does, right? You know, different than anybody else's. That, just... that was a trail where, you know, when we were first getting into it, um, you were getting right hand drive advice you know our, our left hand left hand drive. drive and and you know the people that were watching you through an obstacle they were on the the driver's side of the jeep you're on the other side and they they couldn't see what was on the passenger side yeah that big hole i was going yeah. into and that's you know and it's hard right it's hard it to just, say no because i for me i wanted to back up and just go all the way to the to passenger side and drive through that mess would have been easier than the off camber and stuff but you know we figured it out and got through it but yeah, spotters are good so all right all right that's another episode uh thank you uh let us know what you think we'll see you out on the trails i think we're gonna have a pretty big fall and winter coming up so we'll be out there we'll see you yeah, put your comments about spotters, pros and cons uh, in the comments. like to see them. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Later. Later.